Yeah, I see record is started. So you you can start. Okay, first of all, hello everybody. My name is Yuri Fedyuk and I am robotics engineer at SOSAP. Uh, support projects. I created several devices using ESP32 and ESP8266 uh, uh, microcontrollers. So today I would like to share my knowledge and share my expertise uh, how to work with such devices to create IoT devices. So first of all, we will short agenda. We will talk uh, about ESP32 and ESP8266 uh, MCU. Then we will have SDK and IDE overview and I will show short demo and we will create uh, IoT device. So first of all, what is Internet of Things? Internet of Things is network where each device is connected and it could be some wearable device, it could be your car, it could be vacuum cleaner, it could be a refrigerator and I guess most of you have some device what is connected to the internet. And as the price of microcontrollers that can connect to the network becomes less, we can see boom of IT device now. So far we have more than 50 billion devices connected to the internet as of today. And this uh, value is growing every day. So why I choose ESP32, ESP8266? First of all, they are very inexpensive and you can bought them on AliExpress or on your local market. Starts from $2 or even less if you would like to, bought, to buy a, a bigger amount of uh, chips. Then there are very huge active maker community and there are a lot of ready libraries. There are development environments for them and China market prepare for us a lot of ready boards with connected screen batteries. First of all, SP32 and SP8266, there are series of low cost and low power system on chip produced by Espresso system. Here in the picture, you can see different types of such board, boards and all of them are based on ESP32 or ESP8266 uh, MCU. You can connect camera, you can create your variable device like uh, Xiaomi Mi Band uh, or other smart, uh, smart variables. You can use uh, e uh, devices with e-paper for low power devices, for battery powered devices. The main difference between ESP8232 and ESP8266 is that ESP8266 has only one, uh, uh, one core and ESP32 uh, has two or one uh, core. It depends on the board. Uh, also, ESP32 has Bluetooth on the board. And the main difference is that uh, ESP32 uh, has a uh, flash encryption and ESP8266 doesn't have it and if you have access to the board you can read flash memory and find some sensitive information like uh, your Wi-Fi credential or any other sensitive information and it is not good. You can even read your certificates for to Amazon or any other information. And there are a lot of ways how to program such devices. First of all, this is C and C++. You can program them on JavaScript or Python. I, I, can even, I even found information about PHP and other languages. But we will focus on ISP, ADF and Arduino as we are C++ developers here. <laughs> and those frameworks supports on the C and C++. ESP IDF is 
is Passive IoT Development Framework, and this is official development framework for ASP32, ASP32S2, and ASP8266 series. And this is free toast based uh, of extend support of, uh, and this is, and it is based on free toast version 8.2. However, some functions uh, of FreeRTOS version 9.0 oh, oh, are backported. And this develop, uh, framework consists of a GCC compiler and CMake uh, build system. On the other hand, Arduino core for ASP32, ASP8266 is just wrapper around ASP IDEA. And I would recommend to use it if your project is very small. And uh, application, application written in Arduino core are slower for about 40% as, is, as we use proper and it takes some time. And the main, if you use ESP8266, you, you are not allowed to use free toss in Arduino core because it is not ported. But you can use it in, on ESP IDEA. So let's talk about ideas. Uh, first one is the most simpler one and this is Arduino ID. It is cross-platform and one of the most popular in the world because it is very easy. It has Arduino web editor so you can use your web browser and you do not need to install any additional uh, environment on your on your laptop or on your PC. But it has very low functionality. It's, it looks like text editor, and uh, you can flash directly from the IDE to the to your board. On the other hand, uh, uh, Arduino IDE Pro will be released soon, and it will contain a control version. It will contain a debugger, and all those features will be built into the IDE. I would, I prefer to use platform IO. It is a uh, plugin to Visual Studio Code. It is also is, uh, is cross-platform. Uh, as you may know, Visual Studio Code supports uh, code completion. It supports a lot of different plugins. You can use uh, Winter. you can use a control version for your project. Uh, you can see your project tree on, uh, and, but uh, and Arduino IDE doesn't support uh, this. It, it uh, has, platform I.O. has a built-in terminal with platform I.O. core and powerful serial port monitor. And the last but not least, uh, it supports ISP, IDF, and Arduino frameworks. So you can choose, when you create project, you can choose in what framework you would like to, to work. So by, based on, on such devices, I created a bunch of device, devices for home office automation. And some of them has connection to the internet. Some of them uh, control relays and I can power on or power off some devices such as uh, lights uh, and uh, I can uh, configure them for example, I can power off my lights at uh, sunrise and power on the uh, uh, lights at on sunrise. Also, there are nodes for motor control. It uh, could be stepper motor, or so I can control my how to open my curtains in, in my room in specific house. I can op fully open them, or just part of them could be opened. Uh, some of them, uh, some of nodes has uh, uh, um, uh, databases inside just for data backup and to send this information. For example, when I do not have uh, internet connection, I can save this data on some node. And if internet connection become available, all this data will be sent to my server. 
And now I would like to show you a short demo how to create IoT device and it consists from it consists of two parts. First part will be simple HTTP web server and then we will add connection to internet via MQTT uh, broker. So I'm going to share my ID. I, as I said, I would I like to use platform IO on this old studio code. Let's create a new window. I have prepared one, but let's start. First of all, you need to install your platform IO extension to the board, uh, to the Visual Studio code and could be, it could be done very similar when you, you can install extension, you just need to find it from IO. Here it is installed in, on my environment, that's it. So I'm going to create a new project. I need to open my platform my own. It's loading. Uh, I would like to add some information. I here on my computer I have connected ESP32 development board, and it is connected via USB cable directly to my laptop. So I need to choose my board. It supports a lot of other boards, the module, and as I said, I can choose what framework I would like to use. I will use expressive idea. And I would like to add uh, that for, you need to configure your, to, for first usage, uh, it will take some time because it, it will download your framework, it will download some more files for your board. But as I have downloaded it previously, project will be created fast. I hope at least, <laughs> yeah. It is created now. Here in platform IO, I, I and if you can see what you choose, it's a platform expressive city two board expressive city two dev and framework ISP idea. And also you can control your project from this uh, file. You can use here Arduino or ISP idea. So we have main file, it's our main file for our project. I'm going to copy it and go through the code. So first of all, what we need to know here, we need to initialize our Wi-Fi on the board. Wi-Fi initialize it we need to provide our credential on my environment standard and it is part, doesn't have password. Also, we add Wi-Fi event handler. So we will know when uh, Wi-Fi will be connected. And here we wait until uh, Wi-Fi is connected. So we just wait for some bit and this bit is installed in our handler. So when we, uh, we get IP from our router, this bit is set and we continue work here. So after our Wi-Fi is initiated, we need to start our web server. So we start on our default uh, HTTP port, it could be 80, as I remember. Yep, it's uh, port 80. 
and we have we register for the handler. It's hello. Could be if this path. It's a get request, and we also add our handler. And we add uh, error handler. So when our web server doesn't know how to process request, we will show this message. It be 404 with some error message. Let's add new message. Oh, error message. Let's save. Let's build it. First time it compile all libraries and it takes some time, but second time it will take less time. So it's built and I'm going to show our server monitor here and I'm going to download, upload the build firmware to the board. Project will be rebuilt again and then uh, will be uploaded to the board. Uploading. Just a moment, we need to change about rate of our port. Let's monitor speed. Okay, let's upload it again. Actually, we do not need to upload it just to restart our server monitor, but I already pressed this, boot, this button. Yeah, and after we change, after we did some changes in this file, our project will be rebuilt as it, this is new configuration to this board. Okay. It's Okay, here we see our output, it's just the back output. And now it's registering all these handles. Okay, so now we need our IP address router as this one. 192.168.1.1. Let's open Postman or any other. We can use uh, web browser, but I would like to use uh, Postman to test it. So what, what we need, what we should receive. In our hello, we should receive hello from ASP32. Let's set it to. First of all, let's try some other. Uh, could not get response. Wrong IP address. Uh, yes, I see, but yeah, but for hello, we will receive hello from SP32. Actually, hello. Yeah, one of four not found. Oh, uh, 404 error, no, not found. It's correct because we do not have a handler for this pass. 
but for hello, we have hello from ESP32 as expected. So let's add some connection to the internet to our application. I will add uh, communication over MQTT broker. Uh, just a moment, I have prepared information. Okay. Application is pretty similar. We connect to Wi Fi, start web server, and then we start MQTT connection to our broker. Uh, I use this MQTT broker, but you could use any other. It could be uh, MQTT broker from AWS, but just for example, it is enough for us. It is without username and password and port 1883. We also get an uh, uh, event handler, so we will know when our connection will be connected, disconnected, when we subscribe to some topic or unsubscribe and, and any other information. Also, we will receive this, this event when some data arrives to this board. Here we publish message to topic. Actually in MQTT, all messages are published to the topics and each topic you, you could uh, name it as you want. So here it's topic, <laughs> topic name is topic QOS1 and we send ESP32 data. Also we subscribe to other topic, uh, topic QOS0 uh, all and QOS1. And then we unsubscribe from this topic just so how it should work. We publish this message, then we subscribe to the same topic. So we should receive it from the broker. Okay. And additional information is added to our uh, web server, to our hello handler. We just parse our, uh, uh, our HTTP request. And if we found uh, MSH key, we get its value and send it to the topic. Also, I prepared MQTT client on my uh, laptop. So you, you do not need to you do not need to, to have connection to broker. I just set the same uh, credentials as I said for my MQTT client on the board. It's a broker, the same broker client ID. It's j just uh, for com uh, for information. It is doesn't matter. Username empty, and password empty. I create connection and it's connected. So I'm going to upload my application to the board again as we did changes. Loading. Okay, so as I said before, we sent message and then we received it. Okay, let's go to our web server and we'll send message. It could be any message. Uh, also, from MQTT, we need to create a topic, what we are listening for. In our web server, we are using topic soft serve, so we need to new subscription, it's topic, topic soft serve, confirm. So now our broker knows that this client listened for, for messages from this topic. 
and as soon it receives a message from uh, the client for our from our board to this topic it will resend the message to other clients okay let's open us it was also message is sent as and you can see that message appear here we could send any other hello and message is received also we can send as we made some subscri subscription to message yes topic qos zero we can send message to the same topic here hello from my pc and you can see here in the uh, serial monitor that such message appears on the board and based on this information you can do some items open your relays or close your relays or update your web page uh, so this is a, a short sh short <laughs> demo uh, how to e how easy it is to create such devices it contain only contains less than 250 lines of code with comments and other stuff so it's very easy to create your own device and uh, create your logic for your own device so that's all what i have do you have any questions Mm, yes, I have one question. Uh, are we able to connect some IoT protocol to USB board? If yes, then uh, what kind of protocols can be integrated and uh, what are the limitations of such tasks? Uh, what, what IP protocols you are talking about? Uh, for example, Modbus. Uh, yes, you can connect or uh, all, <laughs> all such protocols and for example for Arduino IDE there are ready libraries let me show you I guess there are a lot of ready libraries for example for platform let's open our platform IO oops just a moment what is going on Let's open the window. And create. For, uh, for Arduino, and uh, I guess for some ASP IDF exists, for ASP IDF framework, there are several libraries, for example, for Modbus, there are different libraries and you could use any of them. But from my experience, some of them doesn't work correctly. And I prefer to use ASP IDF to, for bigger project. But for testing, you can use Arduino Core and the distribute libraries. And it, it is really easy to integrate them. Thank you. Just for prototypes, it is better to use Arduino Core as you have a lot, a lot, a lot of different libraries. But for real product, I would recommend to use ISP IDEA. It is more reliable, it is, uh, it is more stable. In, uh, for example, when I created my first device on uh, Arduino, with Arduino Core. And after half a year, it, it rebooted. Something happens and it rebooted without any issues or other stuff. But I do not have such issues with ISP idea. Do we have some simulation of emulation this device? 
For example, if you need to run tests without this device. Actually, I do not know about such information. And every time I, I use real device as they are cheap and it is easy to debug them on real device. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question regarding uh, power consumption of uh, this microcontroller. And uh, actually, is it possible to use it with battery? Um, how many uh, power it uh, consumes for uh, purposes like IoT, like um, reading some data from sensor and sending it time to time? Uh, yes, good question. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to talk about them uh, about this. Uh, so, for example, for ESP32 has ultra low power coprocessor, and you can program it for a low power for power uh, for battery powered devices. And for example, also, uh, it uh, has a, a sleep mode, and on sleep mode it about 20 micro amperes and you can wake up from time to time and uh, yeah with wi-fi stack it uh, consume much more i don't remember the value but in power mode in uh, in sleep mode it consume about 20 uh, 20 micro amperes but uh, as I said, it has ultra low power coprocessor and you can configure it. I, don't, I didn't use it so far, but as uh, instruction said, you can control ADC from this uh, coprocessor and configure your interrupts so you can wake up your main processor uh, after some event. Uh, thank you. Yes, and one more small question. Uh, as I saw from images, ESP devices and boards has integrated Wi-Fi antenna on PCB, uh, so can we connect some external? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. It contains PCB antenna on the board. All. Let me show you. As you can see here from images, it contains this uh, uh, Wi-Fi antenna. All of the boards contains uh, contain. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi antenna, and you could uh, create access point from this board, and can access to the board via connection to this access point without any other router device. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Actually, uh, it, it works in such way: you create access point, you go to the web page created. You go to the, you you perform connection to the access point, go to some web page or use application and configure ex, uh, connection to your router. It's a general workflow how IoT devices are configured. 